when the world champion Gary Kasparov witnessed Judith play in a tournament at a young age, he commented, she has a fantastic chess talent, but she is, after all, a woman. No woman can sustain a prolonged battle. How often do you hear people say, maths is not for me, or I'm not that good at sports? In fact, I'm even ready to bet you also believe at least one of these statements applies to yourself. These are actually direct manifestations of something called a fixed mindset, which has you believing that excellence is only possible if you're lucky enough to have been born talented. Otherwise, you can only dream of it. According to this mindset, since your success is determined by something given to you at birth, why bother to work hard at all? But one man, Laszlo Polgar, an educational psychologist from Hungary, made it his life goal to prove this fixed mindset theory wrong. Laszlo believed that innate talent was simply a myth and that anyone in this world, regardless of class, ethnicity or gender, has the potential of excelling in any field they please if they're given the right opportunities and put in effort, practice and perseverance. A big theory to prove. So, where do I start, he thought. Well, firstly, I need a wife. After analysing the biographies of well over 400 commonly accepted geniuses, from Socrates to Einstein, Laszlo Polgar found every one of them had the same thing in common. They were all exposed to an intensive specialisation in a particular subject from an early age. Based on this analysis, he came to the conclusion that success is 99% hard work, meaning everyone has the capability of achieving much more than they think. Confident that he himself could raise a genius based on his theory, he presented the thesis to the local government, only for them to tell him to go and see a psychiatrist. But Laszlo remained undeterred. He started approaching women, explaining his intentions, that he wanted to raise a genius, and for that, he needed a wife. While it may not sound like an ideal pickup line, Clara, a Ukrainian teacher, found his motivations fascinating and agreed to take part in his experiment. Shortly after, they were married, and she soon gave birth to their daughter, Susan. Now that he had a child, it was time for the next crucial step, which was choosing the subject that little Susan would become a genius in. Laszlo and Clara decided to avoid the arts, because while one can be a genius at painting or playing an instrument, there is no truly objective way of proving a painting or song is undoubtedly good. Just look at Van Gogh, for example, a widely recognised genius today, but who remained an unknown artist during his lifetime and was only lauded posthumously. But even with the arts out of the question, scientific subjects were still hard to pick from. It's quite challenging to definitively measure how good someone can be at maths, physics or biology. This stumped the couple for a few years, until it finally struck them when Susan turned four years old. Chess. For those who don't know, chess has an ELO rating system, which appoints specific scores to players based on their performance. For example, a beginner chess player is around 800. The average in the US is 1500, and a professional level is 2200. Magnus Carlsen, the reigning world champion has an ELO rating of 2,882. And on top of that, at the time, less than 1% of top players were women. If innate talent was irrelevant, as Laszlo theorised, so was the child's gender. If Susan mastered chess, it would help his theory significantly. Perfect, thought Laszlo and Clara. And so began Susan's chess lessons. And less than six months later, she would already be making her way into Budapest's chess club, accompanied by her father. The Budapest's chess club, as one would expect, was a smoky venue filled with adult men exchanging pieces, shaking hands and throwing around bets over who would beat who in the next match. Not a place where children like Susan were a common sight. The club members all looked strangely at Susan, assuming she was accompanying her father to a match of chess and not the other way around. They would all laugh when her father explained to them that she was there to play, 
and joked about how she could barely reach the table. One could only imagine the face they made when one by one their big hands had to shake Susan's tiny hands as they accepted defeat. Because little Susan won every game. And she would do so again a few months later after entering a local chess competition where most of the participants were more than twice her age. While Susan was in the middle of a chess lesson in 1974, Laszlo received the news that Clara gave birth to their second daughter, Sophia. And just 21 months after Sophia was born, arrived a third, Judith. Laszlo just gained two additional subjects for his experiment. Susan was on the right path to becoming a chess genius, but that wasn't enough to prove Laszlo's theory. It could have been a miraculous stroke of luck after all. Laszlo knew that if he was able to turn Sophia and Judith into chess players as he did their older sister, his theory would hold true weight. Thus, the Polgar sisters were born, literally. Before we continue, it's important to note that this experiment attracted a wide variety of criticism as the three sisters were homeschooled, encouraged to work and study a substantial amount of time for a kid, and discouraged from wasting time as much as possible. Even Laszlo and Clara's neighbors speculated that the sisters didn't play enough or were deprived of a childhood. These theories, however, directly clash with the sisters' point of view. In a 2012 interview, Judith stated that she and her sisters were raised in a very special environment where learning started as a game. In particular, Judith praised her parents for their ability to motivate and stimulate her and her sisters, and for spending so much time with them. The three sisters were intensively motivated to learn chess, and enormously happy in the world they grew up in. A huge task lay ahead for Laszlo, proving he could do again what he did for Susan with Sophia and Judith. Laszlo and Clara replicated their education for the two younger sisters, and patiently waited to see if it would work. By 1984, when Susan was just 15, she became the highest ranking female chess player in the world. In 1986, she became the first woman to qualify for the Men's World Championship and became Grand Master in 1991. Sophia was regarded by her other sisters as the most talented chess player among them. However, she was also regarded as lazy and the artist of the family, something she herself confirms. As a result, she didn't put in as much effort in practicing as her sisters did. Nevertheless, in 1989, when Sophia was 14, she won a tournament in Italy that was later nicknamed the Sack of Rome, which included five grandmasters. Her performance for that tournament was given a score of 2,879, one of the highest in history. Judith, the youngest, was considered to have the least talent among the three, according to her sisters. One might think that because she was the least gifted among the three, this disproved Laszlo's theory that no one is born a genius. However, they'd be wrong. Despite Judith's slow start, she was the hardest working sister, and according to Laszlo, success was 99% hard work. Judith was the youngest player to reach the top 100 at just 12. And not only that, she became the fastest player to achieve the title of Grandmaster at just 15 years and four months old. When the world champion Garry Kasparov witnessed Judith play in a tournament at a young age, he commented, she has a fantastic chess talent, but she is, after all, a woman. It all comes down to the imperfections of the feminine psyche. No woman can sustain a prolonged battle. However, that was something he would have to reconsider when a few years later, Judith beat Kasparov himself in a tournament. As Kasparov stated later in his book, if, based on Polgar's games, to play like a girl meant anything in chess, it would mean relentless aggression. It would be impossible to list every achievement Judith earned throughout her life, being the top-ranked woman and eighth overall chess player in the world. It is, however, possible to assume Laszlo's experiment was an astonishing success. The sisters acknowledge that their world ranking is in line with the efforts each of them put in, 
which, perhaps coincidentally, goes against the talent each seemed to be born with. Judith, the weakest player, ranked as number one, Susan as second, and Sophia, who put in the least amount of effort at sixth, which is still very impressive. Not only does this demonstrate that effort outdoes talent, but it also shattered beliefs that chess, amongst other sciences and disciplines, is more suited to men. <laughs>